Hi, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. And thank you for joining me today for my new series called Way Out Wednesdays. Now, every Wednesday, I'm going to be posting a video that's going to be talking about some subjects that may be way out there for some of you, may not be way out enough for others. So far, we've talked about UFOs and aliens and spirit guides, and our soul group. Who do we work with when we're in between lives? Who do we work with on the other side to plan our next life? You can find those videos if you click on the icon on this page. You'll be taken to my main YouTube page. From there, you will see some tabs. If you will click on playlist, you will see a playlist tab for Way Out Wednesdays but you will also see some tabs for Ghost and a lot of other really fun videos. It's all there for you for free to watch. There's quite a bit of really fun, I think really funny content there for you to check out. So that's all there for you to check out whenever you would like to do that. Now today, today, I asked my spirit guides, you know, what do you, what is the best thing? What is, what's going to help? the viewers the most to know about. Now, some things, you know, sometimes we're just in the mood for being entertained, right? Other times we're in the mood to learn. And then the other times we're in the mood to be entertained, learn, and to literally change our lives. Why not? Why not throw all three of those things in there together? I think that's something I personally strive to do in my videos. I want to be entertained, but I also want to learn. And my God, if I could change my life, then that's like a trifecta, right? That's a pretty, pretty good deal. Today, we're going to talk about your soul's boss. Now, that's a loaded thing to say. I know it is loaded. And I will also say that it's very human of me to say that because that is not at all how it works. But humans, most humans, Think in a linear way. So I would say to you, when I'm trying to describe or teach a class on the hierarchy, here's another word that doesn't really exist. But again, for us humans, it's helpful to sort of be able to make sense of it. And, uh, you know, there's not very many of us that are like Einstein that can figure out time has no beginning and end and wormholes and all of that, right? Right. We really sometimes just need information broken down into a way that we can really understand it and make use of it, right? So that's what I try to do here. So in that vein, I'm going to tell you how I understand it is we have our higher self in the first position, our higher self or also called our over soul, O-V-E-R-S-O-U-L is the highest part of us, the most elevated, the most ascended part of us. You might say this part of us is closest to God or whatever that is for you. That part of us, the higher self, stays in that position throughout all of our lives. So if you've had 10 lives here or 10,000 lives here, your higher self is a part of your soul a little inter, interdimensional part of your soul that stays there while you're down here in human form, trucking through your lives, doing your lessons, make, understanding your soul path, your soul journey, okay? So your higher self is the part of you that knows everything about you. It is your boss, let's just face it, <laughs> right under that. If we're talking hierarchies, again, this is the only way I can explain it to you, is your spirit guides. Now, your spirit guides, in my estimation, the way I see it, is, could be one, two, or three, and those spirit guides have been with you before in one of your lives. Now, that might have been 50 lives ago, 20 lives ago, who knows, but they've met you in human form and on earth, or potentially on another planet, whatever that life, whatever, however that soul expressed itself 
in a physical form. They express themselves in a physical form with you during that particular time. Now, this is important because your, your spirit guides, they know you. They know what it's like to have incarnated on earth or to have incarnated on some other planet. So they, they know that about you. They can help you because they understand this part of you. Now, your spirit guides also, in my opinion, in my understanding, they only care about one thing. <laughs> you signed a contract with them. And it was not for an extended warranty for your car. It was a contract to help you complete your soul's journey in this life. That's all they care about. These people are mission radar lock on. These, these guides don't care if you do something that's wacky or silly or downright just not in your best interest. If it doesn't affect your soul's journey, your soul's path, they're not going to get involved. Now, if you do something downright wacky and silly, that's going to take you off of your soul's path. Believe me, they have your written consent to get involved in your life and they will. This is where I know you've experienced it. If you just think about your life and you think about those times when someone intervened in your life or you caught a break or some miracle happened and maybe something bad happened that then caused you to change your life in a new direction. I mean, they can get involved in your life in so many ways that I couldn't count them all here. They can send you thoughts. They can bring people into your life to influence you. They can... Uh, bring songs on the radio. They can, uh, they can, you know, you could be number 50th in line to get a job and get the job and wonder, how did I get this job? Well, that would be a situation where your spirit guide helped you out because that was on your soul's path. So if you'll go back, I mean, if you want to go ahead and start writing down the homework now, it might save you some time later. But if you'll go back to your life and just do a little, reminiscing and you'll just jot down a few times where some sort of lucky break or some sort of 90 degree turn happened in your life that actually ended up benefiting you it actually ended up being like unanswered prayers thank god for unanswered prayers i was praying for this job but i got that job and oh my god i'm so glad i did because it launched me in this new direction or maybe because i got this other job i met the love of my dreams, right? Those times in your life that stand out were guidance along your soul's path. So looking at that, those odd occurrences, those oddball things that happened, miracles that happened, synchronicities that happened, whatever it is, if you just write down a few of them, you can kind of start to glean what your soul's path or journey is. So your spirit guides, that's all they care about. One track mind. Now, also in the hierarchy is the helper guides. The helper guides, in my opinion, are spirit guides that you can call in to help you with anything. And believe me, right now, they're unemployed. They're sitting on the curb crying, okay? They, they want to come in and help you. It is their journey, their soul's path to help us. So by asking for their help, you're helping them fulfill their soul's mission. Now, this help can be silly. It can be, I just need some help finding a parking space. No, nope, not kidding. Not kidding. There's, it doesn't matter. Or it could be, I need help. I really need some help figuring out this task that I'm doing. Maybe you're taking classes or maybe you're thinking about, gosh, what do I do with my life now that I'm retired? Or maybe you need some help. Um, you really want to understand more or need some help with a family relationship. You know, just can I get a helper guide to help me better work with this person or better understand this person 
or better understand me and what I need. So all you have to do to get a helper guide is just to ask, hey, hello, it's Susan. You know me, I would like a helper guide, please. And I would like a helper guide to help me X, Y, Z, lose weight, get healthy, uh, pay attention to my health, uh, become a better X, Y, Z, to become more spiritual, to help me with my gifts, anything, guys, it's open. So that's kind of the hierarchy. Now, if you want to think about it in a hierarchy, and I this is the only way I can describe it to you. In my opinion, on the side of that hierarchy are angels. They're in a completely different realm for me personally. Now, in my experience, angels are fantastic. I, I love my angelic helpers. When I'm doing healing on myself, or on a client, and I'm not an energy healer, but I'm a do it all. I mean, basically when I do a reading, if your spirit guide says, hey, this person's got an attachment and you need to remove it, then I remove it because it's not me. They're doing it, right? So in that case, I know from experience that I will call in angelic healers to go in and heal that area in your energetic body. You can do the same thing. Intention is everything. It's everything. What is your intention? If your intention is to bring an angel in to help you, you will have angelic help. Now, most angels have not incarnated on earth, which makes their energy different. Not better, not worse, but different. It's certainly worth calling in and asking for their help. They will help you. It's a very different energy. Those of you that are very sensitive to energies may even be able to, once you start working with your helper guides and then start working with angels, you'll start to see a difference in their energy. For me, my helper guides are like, whoop, right here, like my best friend. Their energy is very accessible to me. Um, it doesn't feel heavy but it doesn't feel light. It just, it's just there. They're, they're like my friends that you can't see. Now, angelic energy is lighter. It's brighter. It has a quality of this. It's real, it, you know, very um, cosmic or um, just, just a brighter light. Now, I'm going to tell you something that people don't know. <laughs> these angels are free agent. Don't work for anybody. You don't have to be religious. You don't have to be a particular religion. You don't have to be Christian. They don't care. They work for the betterment of our souls. So they don't care if you are or aren't religious or if you're of a particular religion that maybe doesn't have much to do with angels, okay? Okay. They don't care. They're there for you. They're happy to help. But you have to ask. In all of these situations, you have to ask. And for those of us that have a hard time asking for help, it's something I really want you to work on because they're there to help you. This, All of these resources are around you. Why not start now and ask and, and connect, connect your energy to that energy, align your vibrations. So I feel like angels are healers for sure. Of course, we have the archangels, which you probably have heard me talk about. Again, I'm not an angel reader. I'm not one of this. I'm not a person who's an expert in anything. I'm simply telling you what my spirit guides are telling me. I'm a channel. I'm a vessel. There's so much information out there about all of this. If you hear something on Way Out Wednesdays that, you know, tweaks your, your interest, please go out to the World Wide Web and research. And anything that feels good to you, keep it. If it doesn't resonate with you, scroll on. There's no judgment either way. We're all different. 
We all, and we're all different at different parts of our life. A spiritual healer might be very prominent and helpful for you at one part of your life. And then you may move on to another one and then another one. And then you may go back to the first one and that's okay. What's important is you do what's best for you. Okay. So the archangels, the archangel that I use the most, because let's just face it. I stay in spiritual timeout <laughs> as a human, the human part of me, I'm not bragging. And I'm, I mean, I'm not bragging about this. It's, it's, I, I can't believe that I say these things because it's really kind of embarrassing, but I think I'm a troublemaker in the spirit realm as a human. So I'm constantly getting in trouble. And plus that I've got a little bit of, uh, you know, fight in me. So if I come across an energy that, you know, is a bad energy or an energy that's a negative energy or a negative, uh, whatever you want to call it. Again, these are judgments that do not exist on the other side, but they exist for Susan. You know, so what I'm saying is if you're going to come up in my business, in my energy business, and attack, attack me or attach to me or trick me. I might just fight you. <laughs> I'm going to call it like it is. I know you guys don't know this about me, but I'm scrappy, right? I'm generous. I'll give you the shirt off my back. But it's just like my dog Zoe says. I'm not going to start it, but I'll finish it. <laughs> so I get into trouble, right? So that's why I've had to know. Archangel Michael, because Archangel Michael is the archangel that carries the sword. Which I have one hanging right here on my wall. He carries the sword. He is the protector of the light workers. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, I'm not a light worker. Yes, dear, you're a light worker. Yes, you, you, that one. The one looking at me, I'm looking at you. You're a light worker. You got love in your heart, light in your soul. Boom, you're on the team. Sorry, you just got drafted. So it does not matter. Archangel Michael is here to protect everybody, regardless of what of whether or not you think you even need protection. If you call on Archangel Michael, what is your intention? If your intention is he's going to come help me, then he's going to come help you. If you call on Archangel Michael and you don't believe that he can help you, then it's going to be a little bit harder for him to help you. This is where faith comes in to play. If you have faith, you've got everything. You've got all the assistance that you need. So we have Archangel Michael. Another Archangel that I really like to call on is Metatron. Now, I know these two Archangels because my spirit guides are like, hey, you need to call 1-800-METATRON right now because your butt is, <laughs> you're in trouble. So I don't know all the archangels, right? But I know for me, Metatron helps me out when I'm on the astral plane and I'm walking through the astral plane, you know, Central Park or the Mall of the America or whatever it is the astral plane version of. And uh I take a wrong turn and I'm in the wrong place. I'm in the dark alley of the astral plane. And now all of a sudden I've got some energy dealing with me that may or may not have my highest good in their little alien heart. So in that case, I call in Metatron. That's just, that's me. May not work for you. Works for me. Works for some, most of my clients. Metatron is about the sacred geometry. You're just going to call Metatron. You don't have to tell him what to do. As a matter of fact, I suggest you don't because he's not going to listen anyway. But you can watch or you can know. Metatron put up some kind of cube or some kind of box. That's what I often see when I'm dealing with energies that maybe are not something that I should have been dealing with in the first place but I accidentally sort of got myself in this mess, Metatron comes in, he deals with it for me. However that is, I don't need to know. I don't need to see it. I just need to know that it's done. That these two archangels are going to help me out of a jam. Now there's Archangel Gabriel. Um, there's all kinds of archangels and they're fascinating. And they all have a role that they can play in your life. Now, again, these archangels 
are free agents, <laughs> that you don't have to be Catholic. You don't have to be any religion. You really don't. Uh, maybe that religion was smart to uh, sign them all to a contract, but it didn't really work like that because they're truly free agents. They'll come help you any way you need them to. Okay. So that's the angelic realm in a, in a quick kind of rundown. On the other side, I feel like we have the alien or the star seed, star people realm. So if you think about it, we've got this direct line straight to creator God, right? So we have our soul, we have our spirit guides, and then we have our higher self, and then we have the creator. Then in my estimation, understanding of it, kind of surrounding us, our angels, and then these other entities that might be from other planets. Some of them might be your ancestors. These might be your um, ancestor aliens that are also surrounding you and helping you. If you have a connection to a particular planet like Lyra or Atlantis or Lumeria, and, it, and it's strong, if this connection is strong in your DNA, so to speak, your energetic DNA, these energies will also be around you because you're part of them and they're part of you, okay? So this is kind of the fishbowl mix of energies around us. And there's there's more, but I really want to get to our soul's boss. But I, I wanted to just give you the lay of the land, okay? This is my understanding of it. If it doesn't resonate with you, please go find someone that resonates with you. There's no, there's no shame, no judgment in that at all, period. And it's only shame and judgment when we make it so. So... Getting back to your higher self. Now, it's really interesting. I get more help on the daily from my helper guides, my helper spirit guides, okay? My spirit guides that are in charge of my soul's path, soul's journey, they don't talk to me. I've said this many times. They only talk to me when it's pertinent for me to know about my soul's path or soul's journey. And I've talked about this many times. Would you rather get a three-year-old to get in the car without asking why, where are we going? When are we going to get there? Wait, I don't want to wear this. I'm going to take this off. I mean, come on, we're three-year-olds. <laughs> so if, if the goal is to get your three-year-old in the car, and in the car seat and buckled up, and that's your goal, then you're going to try to do it without having to engage them. <laughs> so for, for our spirit guides, if I start asking them a lot of questions, I'm not moving towards my soul's path because all of a sudden I'm thinking, I don't know if I like this soul. I mean, are you sure this is my soul path? Can I do something else? Is it too late to change my mind? Can I do this later? Because I'm kind of busy right now. You know, no, they don't want to hear any of that. So they guide you on the download, which I've told you guys this many, many, many times. That's why when they say, Susan, you're going to do a video called Way Out Wednesdays. And then I say to them, no, I'm not because I don't have time to do something every Wednesday. And I just can't have that kind of pressure. So instead, what did they do? Well, let me tell you what they did. One day when I had the whole day off, which doesn't happen very often, I woke up and I thought, oh, I'm going to do a video. I'm going to do a video every Wednesday. It's like you're, it's like you're, you're, <laughs> it's like you're hypnotized. It really is because I came in here. And I said, okay, I'm going to do a video every Wednesday. And then I started thinking about it. And they were like, no, 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 you don't, you don't have to, I don't need to do all that. I just need to do this. Okay. I just need to do this. Right. Okay. I sat down. I did three videos in one day because, because they knew if I just did one video, the next week I'd get too busy and not do it. How do they know this? Well, from experience. <laughs> from experience 
So they knew if I did three videos, I could schedule them in advance for the next three Wednesdays. And then they knew that you guys would like them and tell me you like them. So then I would be on the hook like today. Today happens to be Wednesday. I'm filming this this morning. <laughs> so, but they, they guided me. They got me to do it without me thinking. Okay. So that's it. Your spirit guides are going to guide you without you really thinking about what they're doing. You're going to get in that car as the three-year-old. You're going to buckle in. You're going to put your little seatbelt on. You're going to get all snuggy in that chair before you even knew that you were out of your bed. That's their goal. Now, our higher self, because people are always like, well, how do I get guidance? How do I get guidance if my spirit guides don't want to talk to me? Except for when they have to about my about my uh, my soul's journey. How do I get guidance? Like big guidance, big picture guidance. Guess what? You go to your soul's boss. That's right. The boss lady of me. Now, in my experience, when I've talked to my higher self, let's just say that there's no jokes. <laughs> there's no fun. It's... Very matter of fact, flat, you know, the information, just the facts, ma'am, you know, with just the facts, I'm going to tell you the facts. It's, it's not emotional. There's no emotion. So get used to that. And it's not going to be chatty. <laughs> they're not going to, they're not going to, this isn't your BFF. They're not going to pull up a cup of tea. And sit down and chat with you. Now, your helper guides will chat with you. Your higher self, no. So when you go to your higher self, I would like for you to go with a question. And make the question as succinct, as direct, as plain, as simple as possible. Because you really want to get guidance that's helpful. If you ask what do, what do I know? What, what do I need to know for my highest good? Well, you might get an answer like love yourself. And you might feel like that's a bunch of bull hockey, you know, like, yeah, right. Everybody says that. I mean, I can get that in a fortune cookie, you know, at my favorite Chinese restaurant. Come on, give me something that I can use. Right. But then you need to understand that loving yourself is number one, number one the most important thing you can do. You just ask them, what's the most important thing I can do? You got your answer, didn't you? <laughs> so we don't always believe that. We always want it to be hard or we want some thing that's mind blowing. So ask them a specific question. So how do you even contact your higher self, right? I mean, how do you you know, I mean, there is there a phone number? <laughs> you know, 1-800-SPIRIT-GUIDES- Higher self, number eight for higher self, right? Not really. That's not really the way it works just yet. But what you want to do, in my opinion, again, there's a thousand ways to do this, you guys. You can go on YouTube. You can look up meditations for connecting to my higher self. And again, when you go to YouTube and you look up meditations, guided meditations, you really have to find the one that works for you. If the music doesn't work, you're not going to, it's not going to work. If the voice doesn't work, it's not going to work. If the story that they're using, the guided part doesn't work, not going to work. So don't just listen to one or two meditations and decide that it doesn't work for you. I promise you, there's one out there that's going to work for you, but you've got to find the one that ticks all those boxes. Now, some of you, some of you lucky dogs, can meditate without going into a guided meditation. You can literally just breathe and go into a meditation. Rock on. If that's you, why are you watching this video? Go, go into a meditation and ask your higher self what it is you need to know about X. Now, if you are a TM uh, or some other type of meditator or a meditator that chants, in my opinion, 
And it's the same thing with guided meditations. Any meditation where something is coming into your brain, even if it's tones or binaural beats or whatever it is, that's all good. However, in my opinion, wait until it's done. Do your meditation, the guided meditation, the beats, the chanting, whatever that is. Wait till you're done. When it says, now come back, wiggle your fingers, your toes, open your eyes. That's when you, you don't do that. You stay in that beautiful place that you've created where your thinking mind is over here asleep on the beach. And your subconscious is now present. That is when you want to then have the intention of talking to your higher self. So when you get to the end of that, you would say to yourself, aloud if you are in a private place or quietly or to yourself, whatever works, does not matter. I would like to connect with my higher self at this time. Then wait. This is a new connection. You're traveling quite a ways vibrationally and your vibration that day may affect how easy it is for you to connect with your higher self. If you're meditating and there's construction going outside or sirens going by, or you think I only have five minutes to do this, you may not be able to have this connection immediately. So what what they would say, and they've said this in the past, and I think this is a really good visual for you guys. If your higher self is here and you're here, let's say you're here and you meditate and you go to that place where you can say, I would like to connect to my higher self and you go this high and you come back and you don't connect. That's okay because you're, you're kind of exercising the muscle. So as you continue to meditate, as you continue to ask, you'll finally get there, okay? You may or may not get there on your first try. Don't give up. Do not give up. This is super important. The, my spirit guides have told me this is the most important thing you can do. If you want that, that knowledge, if you want that higher vibrational knowledge, the bigger picture, continue reaching out to your higher self. Now, you may not want to reach out to your higher self every hour or every day. You know, you may want to get Whatever that is. Now let's talk about that because they want to talk about that. How will your higher self communicate to you? So, and I want you to understand that all of these things are valid. All of these things are valid. Please do not underestimate the value of any type of communication that you get. Because that is, that will derail you. It will cause you to doubt and it will throw you off of this path, which you'll likely come back to at some point. But why do you want to go around here and be doing loopy loos when you could just stay connected, disconnect, connected, disconnect, connected, disconnect, okay? We don't really want to do those loopy loos, unless you need the lesson of doing the loopy loos. So how might your spirit guide connect with you? Okay, let's talk about your God-given birthright intuition. We all have it. Let's not call it psychic. Let's call it intuition. So you might connect with your spirit guide and you may simply feel something in your body, in your physical body. You may feel heat. You may feel coolness. You may feel shivers, tingling. 
You may feel pressure. You may feel just a little bit dizzy. You may hear something. You may hear tones. You may feel, literally feel feathers from your angels. You may know something. You may have a knowing. Your higher self can communicate in whatever way is best for you. Because your higher self is you, is a part of you. So your higher self knows the best way to communicate with you. So if you finally connect and you feel shivers and that's it, please don't be discouraged. Your higher self connected with you to let you know you just connected with a part of you that is multidimensional, <laughs> that is not human. And that's okay. That's how your higher self decided to connect with you. That's, you write that down. That counts. And that brings up another point. Please write these things down because they may not make sense to you. You may say, well, I didn't understand that. And then you're going to forget about it. But if you write it down in a journal, a book, or in your phone, or in your laptop or tablet, if you do this every week for several weeks, you're going to see a story unfold. The first time I connected with my higher self, I all I felt was warmth. All I felt was warmth. I mean, it's really a miracle. Is it not that you're connecting to an interdimensional, multidimensional piece of yourself? <laughs> The second time I connected to my higher self, I had a feeling of love. The third time I connected to my higher self, I heard, I knew, I felt the answer yes when I asked my question. So you can see, I want you to understand that, that when you connect to your higher self, it's going to take some time for you to really develop that connection to your higher self, to really sort of um, make that connection stronger. And then the more you do it, the stronger it gets. And then you have the most important guidance. You have access to the most important guidance you will ever get in your lifetime. Now they're telling me sometimes your higher self may not be able to tell you the answer to something. This is a school. And if the teacher gave you the answers to all the, the test questions, then we wouldn't learn very much, right? Sometimes you may not get the answer. Where you can, where it makes sense for you to have that extra knowing and that extra guidance, you can get it from your higher self. But I will tell you from my own experience, they pull no punches. They will tell you, they will tell you what you need to know. Okay. I mean, they may tell you that you're too concerned with your own ego, which would mean maybe I'm too concerned with being hurt in a romantic relationship and therefore I don't want to be in one, right? Well, to them, you came on this earth to experience love and to give love. And by not being in a relationship, by withholding that, that's actually being in your ego. I mean, it's it's weird, right? I mean, it, it's weird. It's, you really need to take some time to think about their answers and really ponder them because they're going to tell you things that might surprise you. Now, some other ways that you can connect with your higher self. So you're in this meditation, right? And, and you're, you're in this zone where, where you're not having any stimulus. You're in a private, private room. You're not interrupted. And you're going to ask the question, higher self, what can you tell me about, or you might ask, Am I on my soul's path? Start with a yes or no question, right? 
Um, is this a good time for me to retire? Is this um, a good time for me to start the business that I've been thinking about? Instead of saying, can you tell me about the new business that I've been thinking about? That's too much for them to communicate to you in this beginning process of learning to communicate. Now, once you start meditating or however it is that you connect, going into a trance, whatever it is, once you start doing that and you're comfortable with it, let's say you're comfortable with automatic writing, um, then you can go into whatever process you use for automatic writing. However you get into that space, that trance, and then you can ask to speak to your spirit guides and automatic write regarding your soul's journey. Or you can ask to speak to your higher self and ask them a question. And you would be surprised when it comes to automatic writing. I feel that as you do this more and more, you can really get an entire paragraph out of your higher self. Now, it takes some effort. It takes it takes time. Okay, guys, nobody is going to get out there and do something on a higher level immediately. If you dedicate yourself to this and you dedicate some time to this and you're gentle with yourself and you allow yourself to connect, however that is, there will come a time where you will get real information, sentences and sentences of information that can be very rewarding and very eye-opening, okay? So hopefully this has helped you understand about your higher self and indeed really kind of the hierarchy as I see it. Again, they don't see it as a hierarchy. They see it as a big blob. But for humans, I mean, you're more than welcome to see it as a blob. You're more than welcome to see you know, your spirit guides over here, your higher self over here, your angels over here, you can put it in any, whatever context works for you. This is all about what works for us so that we as humans can get a grasp of it. So we can start to kind of understand it. Okay. Listen, Thank you so much for watching this Way Out Wednesday. Please let me know in the comments your thoughts. I feel like the comments are better than the video. My God, if you haven't watched the UFO video, which I think was the last video, go back and read the comments. The comments are stellar. You guys are like PhD, spiritual ascended humans. Uh, your comments are fantastic. Thank you so much. I really feel like we're all learning together. I don't have all the answers. Um, I really don't. This is my very limited human brain understanding of what uh, of this situation, of what we're talking about today. So I always enjoy reading what you guys have to say in the comments. Take really good care of yourself. Remember, love is the answer. And self-love is certainly the answer, right? We'll talk to you again next Wednesday for Way Out Wednesday. Stay tuned for the meditation. Okay, here's a meditation for connecting to your higher self. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to be in a place where we're not going to be interrupted and we want to get into a relaxed position. Now this may be sitting for you or it may be lying down. It's really up to you. We're going to start off with taking a deep breath, a nice long inhale. Fill our lungs up, fill our belly up with beautiful life giving breath and release that breath. We're going to release any stress that we have, any tension that we have, because at this time we are completely relaxed. We are doing exactly what we're supposed to be doing at this moment. So as we sit here, 
and we allow the calming, gentle breathing in and out, we find ourselves just becoming more and more relaxed. We find that our hands are heavy in our lap and our shoulders are relaxed and our elbows feel heavy as they sink down into our body. We're feeling very calm and relaxed right now. We're in a beautiful space just so nice and calm, floating in space, neither here nor there, just where we need to be, relaxed. We're surrounded by beautiful white light, gentle ebbing and flowing, multicolored light. The light feels as if it's alive. The energy is pulsing gently gently. It's as if this beautiful light is giving us a hug, a very warm, comforting hug. The light just pulses off and on, gently around us. We are completely surrounded by love and light. It's creating a beautiful sacred space for us where we know that we can communicate with our higher self. And get the answers to the questions that we have easily effortlessly, complete connection and understanding. We and our human body and our human soul are now connecting to our higher self, the part of us that knows everything the part of our beautiful multi-dimensional soul that is in heaven or in the place that it resides while the rest of our soul completes its missions through its reincarnations. We are now with this beautiful energy. We are there with our higher self. Standing right next to our higher self. We are able to easily communicate with our higher self. These communications can happen in the form of thoughts, feelings, visions, or any way that you receive this information. You may note how you feel, what you see, or what you know, and you may ask 
to remember this later at this time you are free to ask your higher self your question or you may wish to just be in vibrational alignment with your higher self at this time it is up to you You have now received the energetic vibrational message, or maybe you have received the message in a different format from your higher self. With gratitude in our hearts for each other, for we are one energy brilliant, bright, shining energy. We must now take our leave of each other. You may come back at any time. When you're ready, you may decide to open your eyes, wiggle your fingers, or out of this meditation. Blessings.